Two balloons joined by a piece of clear plastic tubing. Larger blue one on your left and a smaller yellow one on your right. When I release my fingers, you can see I'm pinching both of them at present, air will of course rush from the blue one across to the yellow one until they're about the same size. Okay? Well, I tell you that I can make air go from the little yellow one to the big blue one. And I know what you're saying. You're saying that's impossible. <laughs> Now, can I make air go from the small yellow to the large blue balloon? Well, it's not as difficult as it seems. All I need to do is release my fingers from pinching the balloons. Watch carefully. On your mark, get set, go. And the little balloon blows up the big one a bit more. It does that because when you have a balloon that's small, there's a lot of tension in the rubber, more so than with a large balloon. And because of that, there's more pressure exerted on the air, so it actually pushes air in that direction. You may have noticed when you're blowing up a balloon for a party that it's more difficult to blow up near the beginning than the end. Notice this? Often very difficult to start it. Much easier once you get going. Maybe you've noticed this as well. When you let a balloon go, when does it seem to be pushing air out most rapidly? At the beginning or near the end when it's nearly down? Watch and listen. Right at the end. Push and out goes the last of the air. Okay, so little balloons push air more. Well, if we want the big one to blow up the little one, what can we do? We'll have to help it by squeezing it. Then see if we can get the air to go in the opposite direction. All right, there it is. Now the blue one is blowing up the yellow one. I'm helping it. How far will I need to keep helping it? How far before the balloons take over by themselves? Can you think of an answer to that one? You ponder it a little bit. And while you're thinking about it, and while we're talking about balloons, watch this. <laughs>